Hey, and welcome to the show. This show is brought to you by Patreon members like you. Thank you for being a Patreon member. As a Patreon member, you get a video of the podcast that we put out twice a month. Now, on with the show. The air compressor is off. Hey, yeah. Hey, what's up, James, Felix, David? Daniel, ¿qué onda, carnal? ¿Qué onda? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you just said. All hey, right. So, what's up, man? What's up, right. Mark? What's going on? Hold on, let's do this. Switch this over. Robert Van Hoy, what's Van up, man? How's everybody doing today? How was your weekend? Uh, it was good. Yeah? Yeah. That's cool. I mean, I don't have a weekend. I, have I know, we just have a day. One day off. Yeah, it sucks. I know. You don't have to remind me. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, those kickers sound good. Those kickers were awesome. Yeah? Yeah, we had a good time with those. Uh, we got to hear them, of course. We, we set those up Saturday. And, um, uh, please, you tell her, her up on my court. <laughs> so, this guy, uh, uh, Terry Green. I was talking to Ed on the phone the other day, and they were working on this guy's accord. And um, they were—he texted him some pictures. He goes, "I want the wiring to look like this." And so he okay. goes, "Dude, I'm gonna blow this guy's mind." So we called him and talked to him. Hey, Lazaro. I felt like. Oh, I was, so Ed is gonna make the same thing? Uh, Ada, Ada, I don't know what Ed's gonna do. He's Ada. He's gonna do Ada. So we'll just leave it at that. Marty Dean. Marty here? It's Marty Dean. Hey, spent the afternoon sound at any doors. Don't know how you guys do it. My hands are hamburgers. Gotta use gloves, man, gotta use gloves. Would the quad box float, hold on. Uh, would the quad float anything? I didn't try to float anything. I, I don't think so. I, I don't think it's enough. We did order the SPL meter, the little window stick DSP mini thing to see if um because we know someone's going to ask us how loud it was and I have no idea so um I talked to Derek and was like hey what um which one of these should I get and he was like get this and I was like okay all right so hold on I'm just trying to look things up I don't mean to be this disorganized Same. we were we were you um it before well, I had I was talking on the phone with somebody that didn't really know what the heck was going on, so it was it was rather really yeah it, it's it was not fun. Um, oh wow! Ah, uh, best budget friendly. There is no budget friendly for BO system. For BO system, I mean you got you got five hundred dollars on an adapter, so yeah, I mean much. you're gonna need a BO the um, Zen A to B BO adapter. That's which is expensive. And Metra has one now that's probably a little bit cheaper. Yeah. Uh, but I still would get the that one. Um, <laughs> and then, I mean, from there, I mean, you don't have to go crazy from there. The nice thing is, though, I mean, you know, it just depends. It just depends what you're trying to do. All right. Yeah. Why is this... Uh, what are your thoughts on the DB drive speakers? Put two pair of those in my 2014 Ford Focus SE hatchback. Do you ever work with DB drive before? Me? Yeah. No. Never? No, not at all. Uh -huh. We used to put like loudspeakers only. So. Uh, is Haley going to get the new KS? Uh, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, that's the plan once, once it all happens. How thick of an adapter will I need to get some flak six and a halfs in my Ford F-150 doors? It depends on the year. It depends on the year. Um, if it's the five by seven, and then we put the six and a halfs in, what do we use for those? When we do the ones where we gotta cut the grill, the square ones, where we gotta cut the door panel on the F-150 because the, the six and a half goes down too low. You know, we gotta pull the metal grill off, cut it, put it back on. Dude, you've done two in like the last two months I have no idea you know what I'm talking about no Ford F-150 door panel mm -hmm. has the Sony system and it has the square grill with the five by seven we make a six and a half adapter and then you have to cut it's a it's it's a oh, the old one. Oh, yeah, okay okay I'm like 
This is what I'm talking about, guys. Right yeah. there, man. Yeah. I have no idea. He's literally, we've seen him do it on video. I don't even remember what I did just like two hours ago. Anyways, do you know what size we used? Is that a quarter inch? Yes. Yes, it's a quarter inch. Yeah. Because we have to like countersink the holes just right. I mean, as, after you cut in the plastic from the door panel, it doesn't matter. You can go, you can go a uh, little bit like half inch. Like half inch. Well, no, yeah. because you got remember you got the, 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 the yeah, but like quarter inch is fine. Yeah, because yeah. I think yeah, yeah. What are we talking about? Uh, exactly. <laughs> God. All right, hold on. Um, thoughts on the Kicker RT setup box? Uh, I like all the Kicker R RT stuff. Um, while using LC7i, causing a whining, ch causing a warning chime to be amplified through the amplifier. If so, how can I avoid applying the warning chime without affecting the music sound? Um, sounds like you're talking about a GM. So there's there's only a couple ways you can do that. One is you have to have a, a you know like a DSP with a 31 band EQ where you can go in and turn down that one frequency, or two just use the rear speakers. So if it's a Chevy, uh, I'd want to know what year it was because there might be an amp pro for that. But if there's not, then you can just if you there again depending on the year you can use the rear speakers because they're full frequency and the chime doesn't come out of them unless it has backup sensors. So in which case. You're pretty much screwed at that point. You have to just <laughs> use and have crappy chime. What time is central time? <laughs> oh, thank you, Bill. Right? Okay. So, real quick, while I'm thinking about it, before we get too deep into conversation, what we want to take a look at here is Educar. Let me turn this brightness. There we go. So, this site here um, is Educar. Uh, and what you can do... Zoom in yeah, a little yeah. bit more. If you go to educar.teachable, so for those of you guys who have ever done the teachable stuff, so that is... Can you go bigger? Yes, I can go bigger. That would be smart. Hold on. Let me do this. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Ah, Perfect. there we go. Perfect. So this is Educar Teachable, and it looks terrible. I apologize. Let's zoom in a little bit more. A little bit. Down. No, no, no. Yeah, I know. It's too high. It's, it's too high. high. Okay. I'll just do this. I'll hold the TV. <laughs> What are you doing? You're moving. No, no. no. You, you've moved that now. When you got out, you bumped that. Okay. So we have a new thing that's going to keep us from doing this. Anyways, what you have here is you have the sound audio. This is a $20 course. Right now it's on sale. And then you have the basics of signal tuning a car, which is $29. Okay. What I want you guys all to do tonight for homework, it's an hour-long course. Go to... Educar, that's E-D-U-C-A-R, training, T-R-A-I-N-I-N-G, just like that, Educar training, okay, go to, it's on teachable, T-E-A-C-H-A-B-L-E.com, and I want all of you to take this course for 20 bucks. It's divided into three classes, 20 minutes each, or you can watch the whole class all the way through, and you guys will learn crazy amount so like you get this we have fun this is a little bit more i'm gonna you know it's it's educational so drink coffee but what you're gonna learn on this is incredible i have not done this one yet that's next um but you all want to do that and for 20 bucks it's a deal i mean just sign up it, it's on sale right now so, so you, you don't have time to not, no it's 20 for this one this one's 20 bucks so sign up right now 20 bucks get the course Watch it this weekend, do whatever you want, but educarteachable.com. Okay, that's enough. All right, okay. there's our pitch for the day. You guys should all go do that. All right, sit back down and we'll continue with the show. All right, can I remove the, the, the TV? No, no, just leave it there for right now. All it's right. not hurting anything, well, just in case. Just the um, wire care thing? Yeah, I'm gonna leave this one there for right now. We'll get back to the wire care. All right. So, Hi. what do we say? He didn't smile as much as he did in the quad. Oh yeah, right, Christian. Uh, all right, here we go. All right, so if you're gonna keep doing that, I'm gonna keep that. Uh, heads up for those audio control DM uh, DSPs. There's a new firmware and PC software available. Ooh, thank you, Felix. I will definitely download and do that. All right, awesome. um, I want to change all my speakers, which is the Boston Acoustic System and the factory radio and my Chrysler 300. Should I switch to the Focals? Definitely switch to the Focals. 
I mean, you could, but you, are you going to do anything else? Are we just talking about changing speakers? Or, or are we, we going to change the whole, the whole system? system? Yeah. I mean, if you're just going to change the speakers, it's not going to work that great. You're going to want to change. Hey, Casey. You're going to want to change Casey everything. Morrell. What's up, man? Wow. It's so dark. Oh, because it's the white screen in the back. All right, so. I'm just just, just turn it off. Oh, we'll go you can turn it off. That's it. So we're gonna do a uh, we're gonna do some fun with cool. uh, with uh, Mark's F one fifty. Casey's hooking him up with some morale stuff. Okay. Um, did you answer this? Uh, Felix Probably heads not. up with the audio control DM. Yep. yep DSP, I just yeah? went, I just read that. Okay. You guys all heard it, right? Nope, I did. <laughs> I was um, not there. I told you. See. I have a kicker L7 and with an audio control. Oh, see, just as I start reading, it disappears. Okay. Nope, oh, that one's gone. Dang, today sucks. Welcome to Monday, guys. I think I remember you guys talking about people with DV Drive at the Knowledge Fest show. Yes, we did. Um, dude, this is doing terrible tonight. I don't even know where the hell I'm at on this. Alright, let's just read this. I put my son down SA12 with a 1500 watt amp in my 2017 Honda car with LLC pack high to low converter. Gosh, this is ridiculous. It's just a lot. I had, I had the system without the converter in my 2011 Camry, Camry not long ago. Anyways. It hit harder than how it is right now. Way harder before. Yeah. Any reason for this? Hit harder now? Because it definitely not as loud. Well, yeah. There's, there's a real simple explanation for this. What do you have for a radio? So if you have a Honda and you had a Toyota... The reason why it's not going to hit as hard is because the system in the Honda subwoofer side rolls off a lot quicker than it does in the Toyota. So for example, um, this is a topic we talked about today on 5 Minutes with 5 Star on Instagram. Your factory system is going to have a high pass crossover somewhere located in that 60 to 80 hertz range and the sound is going to start dra dropping down. And when that does that, that's right where you're crossing over your subwoofer, all right? So your, your bass, you're, you know, 80 hertz and, and you want it to play loud. Well, if the signal's not there and you put an amplifier on top of it, that doesn't mean all of a sudden it's gonna get loud. It's not, it's not gonna be loud at all because the factory doesn't have that signal there that the Toyota, that, that Honda doesn't have the signal that the Toyota had. So yeah, you're gonna lose some of that bass that you were so happy with in the Toyota. Um, some ways to fix that are, you know, you can do bass roll off with, try to fix it with the LC7i or the LC2i. Um, but the high level to low level pack is just that. Whatever comes in, it chokes it down and you get minimal loss, but there is some there and then you reamplify it and you're good to go. That's where things like uh, the key lock from Kicker are going to really kind of revolutionize things because you'll be able to put that in and it's going to automatically go in and fix that problem by re-EQing those signals back up and making it flat. So, future, yeah. Now, hmm, welcome to the world. Uh, when are we going to hang out? Well, dude, whenever. You just say when. But the LC2i, that's available now. You can get in there and you can fix that bass roll off. So that'll be cool. But yeah, that's why it's not as loud. All right, I have a Kicker 12 L7S with an audio control 1.800 and I have to keep replacing it because it blows. Also, my Alpine W650 only can go on the volume 22. If you I go higher, it starts to smell the sock. You have your gain turned up too high. <laughs> too high. I mean, dude, no, okay? No, you, you, it doesn't even make sense. You're listening to yourself. Okay, there, I can only go up to volume 22 and then my, my no, you, no, God no, man. Okay, so here's the deal. You need to be able to turn your volume all the way up. It means you need to turn your gain down. All the way down. All the way down. Yeah. So 
it's not a volume knob, it's a gain control. It's a voltage match. So if your Alpine 650, if you can, you need to find out where that distorts first. Okay, there again, all the way up here. And then you can start turning up the subamp. My guess is on that, you're not gonna have to turn it up much, that's for sure. No. And the second thing too is, uh, you know, the, the L7S, you're putting 950 watts to an L7S, okay? Probably not the best thing to do. Um, but I believe the, high, the, the gain is, is The gain way is way too, too high. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is, okay, so everyone always wants, so let's say the subwoofer handles 450 watts, 500 watts, okay? Then you're feeding it 900 watts, but you've had the gain set up right, you have your volume on your radio set up right, you have all the pieces of the puzzle set up appropri appropriately, but now the problem is that you're putting too much wattage to that subwoofer, so yeah, you're gonna blow it. Best bet would be then to reduce the wattage getting to the subwoofer, which would be by reducing the ohm load. So for example, that's a two ohm amplifier, maybe run it at four ohms, it'll get half that power, and that subwoofer will be able to handle it. Or maybe go up to two subwoofers. But there's, there's a statement like that just means that there's something somewhere wrong, and it, it's probably in the setup or the ohm load is wrong, or you're trying to get too much into that woofer. But you should be able to turn the volume on the radio up, unless, I mean, without destroying the woofer, especially, now if your gain is all the way down and you're having this issue, well then, yeah, then it's an ohm load issue and you should change to a higher ohm load so that the subwoofer isn't getting as much power out of the amplifier. Or swap out to the Q-Class subwoofer, which will take that kind of power, no problem. Um, all right, Dean, earlier I asked about the Triton? Triton? Yeah, Triton. Uh, audio, I think I'm going to go with the equipment. A guy okay. that knows, yeah, that's cool. That's good price. Yeah, it's good stuff. Good good price. I don't know how good the stuff is. It's a good price, and why not? Yeah. Uh, Dean, you're aware of the way to get a bandpass crossover on a Kenwood hedge unit? Um, I know some of them have that built into it now, but I honestly have never turned it on and off. All That's right. something we'll, we'll definitely, when we film the new 997 videos, we'll, we'll figure out how to do that. But yeah, there is, you can do bass, mid, treble on the higher end radios. Um, but I don't, I don't know how to do it. I'm sorry. Does the audio control DMA-10 need to be powered by the vehicle to turn on? Can I just plug it into my PC to power it on and do the firmware update? My send... A to B was able to power on just through the USB. No, you have to be powered on with the car, and you have to make sure the car does not go to sleep. Uh, the amps had 750 watts at 2 ohms. What was the birth certificate, though? It has yeah. a birth certificate that'll yeah. tell you the Still. actual wattage. Um, what do you guys think about Terra amps, 12K, or Stetson 10K amps? I honestly have no thoughts on the matter whatsoever. Um, and it, I, I, the only thought I have is that I know that those amplifier manufacturers have figured out a way to make an amplifier with the least amount of parts possible um, in order to create big amplifiers. That right there on the wall behind us is a 10,000 watt amplifier that'll put out 10,000 watts. At, this one won't, but it would when it came out. It was a very unique design. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's about the size of a car door. So, um, yeah. Alex, uh, you are the man. Thank you. Um, I don't know why, but yeah. Any uh, thoughts about any talks about the Kicker KS speakers for mainly Spanish music and hip hop, or which will you? No, those are cool for that. They got that nice bright tweeter. Um, yeah. 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 Oh, totally, man. KS. Yeah. Soccer life. Woo. Arturo. Um, do you guys know which is the best AVIC network Pioneer Radio? Anything that starts with an eight. So the best one is always gonna have an eight in the in the number, so it's gonna be an AVIC eight series. So whichever one you pick, the eight, it, the eight being the first number, and it is always the best one they make. Uh, Dean, are you aware to get a bandpass crossover on a Kenwood Hay unit? We covered that one. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, hey, from AVDC, what's going on, Adam? What subwoofer would you pair with my old school PPI PC2152? I mean, if you want it to sound old school, find something with a small surround, like a like a, like a kicker comp bar, comp bar, yeah, comp bar, regular comp bar. Doesn't have that big surround on it. Um, 
So it looks, it'll, you know, that's they act similar to the old school wolfers, I guess, in that regards. Um, but yeah, honestly, if I had that amplifier, I probably wouldn't play it on anything. I'd just hang it on the wall and just kind of look at it and be like, oh, this looks so cool. Um, Hertz or Audison for mids? So think of that question as a beer and wine, or a, a beer, a beer and pretzels, or wine and cheese. Okay, oh, wow. so Hertz is beer and pretzel. I mean, it's for down and dirty, loud, yeah, woo, get crazy. And the Audison is for that more refined ear, that more, you know, wine and cheese type thing. So whichever one you are, go with that particular thing. Oh, How are your eardrums expensive. after the quad? Uh, it was, they were ringing for, well, I mean, they ring constantly, but they were, they were hurting, that's for sure. Hey, from the Virgin Islands. Have you guys done anything to improve the new Accords? Yeah, we actually have several, we, we have an hour and a half long video on the new Accords. Um, depending on whether you have the amplified system or the non-amplified system, I think now we have videos on both. But it's a fairly simple system uh, for the non-amplified. I prefer the non-amplified over the amplified, but yeah, we do them all. Looking to put more L speakers on my 2011 BMW 328 or, uh, yeah, wagon, what would you recommend for the series and size? In the BMW? In the BMW. Um, I mean, for now, I mean, you, you have several different BMW, like, plug-and-play options, which are really cool. Like, Focal makes a really nice set of plug-and-play. Audison makes the whole Prima line of plug-and-play. But with more L speakers. Morel doesn't make a plug and play um, for that. They do. So if you're trying to do Morel, then I would go hybrid because hybrid has the four inch. Um, yeah. Or you could go with. I would go hybrid. Yeah. I would go hybrid. Uh, don't mention the chords. It's a touchy subject. <laughs> uh, okay. Blue wire. Going to add the R2. I have factory antenna and bypass connected blue wire now should i connect the remote turn on wire to an accessory wire or vice versa and do make uh do you make and ship custom speaker mounts we do not make custom speaker mounts and ship them however the question is if i have a pioneer head unit as the blue white wire output i have a car that has an antenna wire which is blue and is currently hooked up to the blue white wire i want to add in an amplifier what do i do Couple different things, you have two options. One, and this is the one I typically do, I typically power my amplified antenna to my accessories. So I connect the, um, the car's blue wire to the red wire so that the aftermarket, or so that the amplified antenna turns on and off with the key. And then I will use my blue with a white stripe coming out of my radio to power up the amplifier. The reason why I like to do that is because some of those antenna amplified antennas draw way more current than a remote turn on section on a radio has so by connecting it to the accessory it's usually a 10 amp circuit we're good to go i don't have to worry about it whereas the remote turn on output of a radio really doesn't like that in some cases uh, it can cause noise in the radio from that and or just not turn on at all the other option of course is to add in a remote turn on relay which will power, you know, which will basically just turn on as many things as you want. But then you have the antenna and the amplifier on the same thing, and sometimes we've gotten funky things there. So I like to separate them apart. Can, can you I, guys ask the BMX guy, can I use the Phoenix Gold DSP 8.8? .8? Without the DNC. No, you have to use it with the DNC. The DNC is what has the Wi-Fi module built into it. So it's an actual integral part of it. So you have to have it mounted somewhere up front. Now you can bury it like in the center console to where it actually isn't like part of the system. But if you if you want the Wi-Fi stream wireless streaming, then yeah, you have to use it. Uh, do you tune the car all, do you tune all the cars with the audio RTA? Or do you do some by ear? Heck no, we do them all with the RTA. My ears suck, man. I mean, I, I, I don't, I, don't have ears that are good enough to do that. But if you want a DMRTA, here's the coupon code. You can pick up the DMRTA Pro, get $100 off. It is the audiocontrol.com. Coupon code 5 star, and you will save $100 off of the DMRTA Pro kit, which is the kit that comes with all the cool accessories that you ever possibly want. But no, we use that for every tune we do. If there's a DSP involved, it's using a DMRTA. Uh, if we're using just a radio, meaning it's just the 13 band, Pioneer, Kenwood, Alpine, Sony, whatever that is going on in there, 
we'll just use the basic eye test mic you know because we're not going to be spending as much time we can't do right left equalization we can't do anything like that but the thing you have to keep in mind when you're doing a dsp you have right you have left you have tweeter you have mid there's a lot of things going on and there's really it's I, it's not that you can't do it you could probably do it if you really wanted to you could sit in there and you could listen to one frequency here one frequency there one frequency here one frequency there and, and try to level those two out but there again some people's ears one ear works better than the other so it, it yeah it's just so much i mean we're already spending an hour or two three on doing it with an rta i just can't imagine having to do it without one i'm running four channel amplifier bridge and two channel for the rear for the rear uh powering the focal flux for the bass i have the kx 800.1 i want to add the dsr1 how do you set the time alignment when you're when you are using multiple amplifiers it's not the amplifiers that matter it's the speakers that matter so when you're setting up a, a, a dsp it has eight outputs so the one you were talking about has eight outputs four inputs so you're going to be running everything out so you're going to run the four inputs front and rear or front and sub whichever you decide is entirely up to you into the dsp and then you're going to run the eight channels out to or the, you know whatever eight or six or whatever you have so in your case six channels out to the system the DSP doesn't care how many amplifiers you have. It, it doesn't matter. As long as there's a hole and you've plugged it, it just cares where the speakers are at. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure from here, your seated position at the driver's side to each one of the speakers. And then you're going to put those numbers in. Now the nice thing is, is in the DSR-1, uh, it, will, it gives you the tape measure in the top corner of the software that you can just type in all the lengths you want and it'll figure that out for you. But that's, that's it, it doesn't matter how many amplifiers you have. You could use, it's got eight channels of output, you could use eight mono amplifiers if you wanted. Wouldn't affect it in any way. I have a DSP install and a yes. mono amplifier. You're doing a great job, buddy. What's that? Alex what? said you're doing a great job. Oh, cool. Um, all right, I have a DSP install and mono amplifier that has LP low pass from 30 to 200, 250. Okay. And does not have the filter uh, the feet or full range, right? The There's full no range selector, yeah. Will be okay to set the low pass filter to 250 hertz on the amplifier and then the 80 hertz on the DSP. Yeah. So some sub amplifiers, they you, okay. So what you want to look at on a sub amplifier is the frequency response. So let me re, let me let me back this up. The question is. I have a sub amplifier that has a low pass crossover on it with no way to shut it off, but I want to use the crossover in the DSP, what should I do? Can I turn the one on the amplifier all the way up and just use the one on the DSP? The immediate answer to that is yes, but let's talk about why there's no switch there in the first place. And that's really more the reason, that, that's kind of the, the thing to mention here. So if you look at the frequency response of the class D amplifier, Class D amplifiers typically aren't full range unless you get a full range Class D amplifier. If it's a dedicated subwoofer amplifier, it will only play up to a certain point. So for example, like the Key 501, I believe plays up to 160 hertz, and that's it. Everything after that is non-existent. So it makes, it, there's no point in putting a switch there to turn it off because it's naturally gonna stop at a certain point. If you turn that crossover all the way up to the highest that it can, then yes, it'll be so far away from where your 80 hertz is gonna be, it's not gonna affect it at all. Plus, it's not even gonna matter because that amplifier is automatically rolling off at that frequency anyways. So yeah, you're good, you're good either way. But that's why it's that way instead of an off switch. So if you ever get into a situation where you're like, I have no low pass off switch on my amplifier, Go back to the owner's manual, look at the frequency response of that channel, and you'll see why there's no off switch, because it wouldn't do anybody any good. There's gonna be a natural roll off point anyways. All right, uh, will having my six speakers factory Boston acoustic system cause the problem with adding the sub, my install was done by Best Buy, I haven't touched the amplifier, I don't know what's really happening, but it blows every three months, the oh. L7. Oh, this is the L7 thing? Yeah, that's the L7 thing. Um, if it's Best Buy, I would strongly recommend just finding somebody else. I mean, it sounds to me like the reason why that woofer keeps blowing is that it's just set up wrong. 
Um, it's it happens, man. Finally, you know they got South. they got thousand employees and in, installers. They're one of the largest employees of installers. <laughs> well, they are the large single store or, or chain. They employ the most car stereo installers for sure. But I would maybe try to find someone else, maybe a different Best Buy, anything. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to tackle it yourself, the simplest thing to do is to walk into the back and just pop the top off, turn the gain all the way down. Uh -huh. Start from there. That That's right where it's at. Um, but yeah. Will Audio Control ever let their DSP amps work together like Kicker and Jail Audio? So the immediate answer to that would probably be no, but... You never know. You never know. Yeah, I know it's not designed to do that yet, not, but who knows? Who knows what backdoor software? I can tell you right now, there's other things that they have in mind that they'd like to do with their software that doesn't involve that. So, Have you done a speaker upgrade on the Alfa Romero, Willa? Uh, no? I don't think I've... No. Yeah. No, not yet. No. Willing. Just haven't done one. Oh, yeah. Well, what's up, guys? Listening from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh... Do you have any experience with the Rockford Punch Pro 6.5s? As a matter of fact, yes, I do. And it was one of the only Pro 6.5 drivers that I thought could put out any form of like, I'm not going to say mid-bass, but I'm going to say a low mid-range. Most of those sealed back, crappy, I'm, I'm not a fan. Um, drivers, just they're just like 300 hertz and up. just And it's like, oh my God, Jesus, stop. Um, whereas those actually played down, I want to say they played down to like 100, 120, and they, they like sounded like musical, like it was almost like a real speaker, um, in the sense that it could play down to a lower frequency, couldn't play down to 80 hertz, don't get me wrong, but it played low enough to where it was like, well, there's actually almost something here. So I was a big fan of those, and when people would ask me, I'd be like, yeah, get these. Oh, they're not going to fit. No, 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 don't get those. All right, Alex, uh, una pregunta, un amplificador de 750 watts. Depende qué, qué amplificador, qué subwoofer tú tengas de 15 pulgadas, uh, checa cuántos watts es y si en realidad aguanta el, el, el omlow de la bocina al amplificador, nada más. Okay, so I like this one. Uh, well, having six speakers in my factory Boston acoustic system caused problems with just adding a sub. My install was done by Best Buy. I've touched the amp. I don't really know why sub keeps blowing. System very... So this is what you're talking about. So this is Thomas Drew. Um, all right. So what I would suggest doing if you have the Boston acoustic system in there is... It, dude, you really need to find someone else to work on your car in that case. Um... First off, if you have the Boss Acoustic Stereo in that car, it definitely needs an Amp Pro. Uh, so you can get preamp level output, so we can start from an actual good place. Um, I'm guarantee they didn't use it. The only two you need to find out, they tap off the front speakers or the rear speakers. The front speakers in that car are the subwoofers, not the rear speakers. Easy enough to check, pull down the carpet on the back and see if there's wires connected there. If there's wires connected there, that means you're not getting an actual base and they probably have the punch base turned up or the bass boost on it turned up too high, which isn't going to help. Um, so there's a lot of things that can be wrong with that system. That You just need someone to get in there and, and really figure out what the heck's okay, going on. I'm kind of like, what is this one? WaveTech 8. WaveTech 8 is a high level to low level. Hey, guys, here's the best you can. I have a WaveTech 8, but I'm not too happy Ooh, with that. In advance. Do you have a 2017 Yukon? If it, yeah, Wave Tech. So you have a high level to low level adapter in there. Two things. One, it'll take an Amp Pro because mm -hmm. it's a Yukon. It's a full size. So you can use an Amp Pro AP, AP4 GM, GM61. If it has a Bose, great. If it doesn't have Bose, dip switch number three on the Amp Pro GM61. Just do a Google search for Amp Pro GM61 in our playlists. We have two videos, one with Bose, one without. That'll get you a six channel preamp output and you get rid of that WaveTech piece and you'll be way happier. Nothing wrong with the WaveTech piece. It's a great high level to low level adapter. However, what you're trying to do with it, there's a better option, definitely go that way. Uh, also, there is uh, Nav TV makes the Zen module for that as well. So. I would upgrade to an actual preamp section. Hello, any feedback on the wireless Android Auto head units? Well, Android Auto head units, 
I mean, they're all certified by yeah. Android, so yeah. I mean, they work good. If you're talking about the Android head units, like Android the white boxes, units suck. bad, bad, bad. Um, I mean, the other day we did a uh, we did a Jeep Wrangler. A guy had the nine inch white box Android yeah. type radio in there, and he'd had it in there for six months. Mm -hmm. um, it looked was great. Right. It was fabulous. Oh my god, it looked phenomenal. It gave you the whole dash. It yeah. was gorgeous. Um, it was the biggest piece of crap ever. It was yeah. slow, it was clunky, it didn't work, it was falling apart after six months. And he said, screw it, and he paid the $2,200 to have the Alpine put in place of it. Which, honestly, I think the, the Android radio looked better, but the it didn't work. So, it's a hit or miss. You get one guy that says they're crap, you get another guy that says it's great. As a rule of thumb, though, we don't install them, yeah. because... I don't have the patience. And about to and talk about the Pioneer W4400 NEX, uh, the wireless Android, you, the wireless Android Auto works fine in those radios. It's just you have to download the the application, Bluetooth, and, and you have to have the right phone. And make sure you have a right wire. That's it. Well, you don't need a wire if it's wireless. Well, yeah, but yeah, well, that's right. But you have to have the right phone though, because not all phones on all carriers do wireless Android Auto. Yeah. So. Even though we've had cases where the phones are supposed to, meaning when you Word. Google search them and they say they are capable of wireless Android Auto, depending on the network they're on, that has been disabled. And this is why Apple, in my mind, is so much better for that. But hey, that's okay. It's an open thing. Do what you want. Uh, thoughts on the rod for Fosgate? T1, 12-inch subwoofer on an LC 1.800. Ooh, wow. Oh, it's a full-size T1. Yeah, that should work. 800? Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. Will the Alpine, will the 8, oh geez, sorry. Will the, oh, where'd it go? I am by mid and high snow. No, it was an Alpine 8 inch. Uh, all right, hold on. Let me go here. This is never any fun. <laughs> it's just going away. Uh, EX, 211 EX, opinion. It's an inexpensive Pioneer. Um, honestly, spend it, I mean, <laughs> So what you got the money for, buy it. If you can go another 100, 200 bucks up, get into one of the NEXs, you'll be way happier. Bobby, what's going on, buddy? All right, I, I am by mids and highs, and I changed my turn signals to LED. Now I get this Y noise when it's flashing. What could it be? I'm gonna shit it. I'm gonna say it's a ground problem. What did he do? Uh, he amp his mids and highs yeah. and change the LEDs, the turn signal LEDs. Oh. So now he every time turns is like... Oh no, well it depends on what kind of amp you use. Plus those LEDs, those things bleed RF. So if yeah. the amplifier doesn't have adequate RF shielding, that's what the heat you're, you're going you're to hear them. You're going to hear the feedback in them. Mm -hmm. Or if the LEDs don't have adequate RF shielding well, which is probably more the case um that's why you're going to hear it through the system yeah. so things like that hids leds they all create noise man and it's got to go somewhere so uh, probably you have to replace ah oh, man that's no no so i mean it like could also be rcas might RCA. need better rcas um uh, ever made a sub box out of birch yes not many though because birch was something that came in way after like we, we did MDF, you know, in the, in the first 20 years, it was MDF, MDF, MDF. It wasn't until much later. Birch was made for entertainment systems, um, but I made a lot of those. Uh, the two, okay, the CA2006 complaint means anything anymore? Two thought, yeah, actually, two thought means anything. So, yes, it does. So, CA2006 compliant is a set of standards that if you pay then you're, the consumer that knows about it is gonna be guaranteed a specific experience, all right? Now, the problem is you have to pay to be a member, but you get to put it on the box that says CA 2006. Now, the cool thing is, is they're just coming out with, right now, they're trying to finalize CA 2006C, I think? Yeah, I think so. C, which is gonna be the new standard. Yeah. So really what you're looking at is companies that belong to that are going to be your high-end companies. You're like Alpine, Pioneer, Kenwood, Sony, um, uh, Rockford, Fosgate. All the brand names that are associated with 
not internet sales. Nothing wrong with those. Don't get me wrong. But like Scar and and uh, uh, Sundown and Cadence, all those other brands that they're not going to sound digital. Doesn't have it. Um, they're not CA two thousand six compliant. That doesn't mean that, that, that that's not a here or there. Meaning that they make something that isn't as they're just not willing to pay. Okay, so. Most manufacturers use it as some form of a marketing thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the new C that is coming out or is trying to come out is going to be really cool. And it's going to really kind of shut things down if it does happen because you're going to have to play your amplifier to get its power rating. You're going to have to play your amplifier for a full minute before it means it has to put out whatever it says for a full minute. Right now, it's like, you know, that. And that's why, like, amp dynos are, are, they work, because it's like, it's, yeah, there you go. Okay, what did it put out? There's your power. And then, then, yay. But most people just use it as a marketing thing. All right. Uh, will the 8-inch Alpine Type R fit under the 2020 Accord passenger seat? Or possibly behind, behind the seat or near rear the speakers? So I don't want to, I don't want a box in the trunk. So I think Alpine actually Alpine makes, makes brackets yes. to fit the yep. eight inch because I think the twenty twenty is the same as the two thousand nineteen. With the harness and everything. But they make uh, yeah, I think go to mm -hmm. Alpine.com. I think yep. they have it they for your car. It might only go up to nineteen, but your car didn't change in twenty twenty. I don't think so. It'd be the same. Be the yeah. same system. Maybe you can call them. And but I mean, we in the two in the, up to two thousand nineteen, we fit. The uh, Q Class 1005 underneath the passenger seat with no issue. Yeah. And that and that high up in there, so there's lots of room underneath that seat. Uh, Android Radio bottom line, they look great. They may not or may they may or may not work. They sound like ass. Thank you, Robert Van Hoyt. We should put that on a shirt. <laughs> Uh, you guys do high no, we do not do high output alternators here because if you're gonna do a high output alternator in your car, you should know how to replace your alternator. Because even though MechMan and those guys do a great job on alternators, Sunday afternoon when your alternator dies, eh, it might not be the coolest thing ever. I have a 2016 crew that's called two Alpine amps. S subs hooked up Rockford Fosgate 1200 amp, but I'm not getting the base from it. I thought I get the head unit is a 9906. Uh, any is there anything I can check? Uh, the subs are four ohm, but wire impeller one ohm load base knob is connected. Um, I have two Alpine Type S subs hooked up to a Rockford. Okay, first things first. The one thing you didn't put on here is what type of box it is. So, 80% of the sound of the woofer is the box. The woofers, when sitting on a table with an amplifier hooked up to them, just goes Doesn't do anything. The box is what creates the sound. All right, so let's say you have a sealed box, you have a porta box, but you don't have the porta box or the sealed box for that. Like I know A-Trend makes specific Alpine porta boxes that are for the woofers if you want to get one that's for it. Um, most ported boxes are pretty close, uh, but there again. The other thing too is you have two S-types with 1200 watts going to them. They're not made to handle that kind of power. I don't care what the side of the box says. An R-type handles 500. S-type sure as hell ain't gonna handle 600 watts a piece and learn, live long to tell about it. You might wanna upgrade your subwoofer. If you want big, fat, and boomy, check out some rock for P3s, all right? You'll be much happier. Get a ported box. Hell, get the factory box for those, and you'll be all set. But I would take a look at the box. That, to me, sounds like where your problem is. Now, if you had a custom box built that's specifically for S-types, then you need to switch out the subs to something bigger and better because that's way too much power for those. All right, hello. How are you guys? Great. Thinking about replacing my Kicker IQ 4-channel amplifier with a Rock for 400X. Yeah, 4-channel amplifier. Do I need to return? Retune my kicker if you, I ended out to link in my rock for amplifier. I'm using it. Yeah. Uh, where is it? I'm using, I'm using it, it to push my IQ component, Senko Axel speakers. 
So if you have a Kicker IQ 4 channel amplifier, that has an EQ DSP built into it. So I don't know, it depends on how you hooked it up. If you hooked it up and you plugged it into the laptop and used the EQ DSP built into it, well then by taking that amplifier out and putting in the Rockford, Rockford. amplifier, you have no tuning at all. There's no tuning whatsoever. Um, if you have a full, it, I, I, would, I would never do that is what I'm getting at. That's an AB class amplifier. Sure, it's not as technically powerful as that other Rockford amplifier, but I would still not do that in a million years. That would that would never be anything I would do. I if if I if I okay. I, I I would I would leave the full channel for the components in the front. Yeah. Like like full uh, active. Full active. Yeah. And just buy probably the I'd buy the Q class two two five uh, the two channel. The two channel yeah. and just for the rears. But if you, the real thing is, is if you've never plugged it in and turned on the EQ or DSP. Yeah, you probably. First, why? But two, yeah. I would chew that on before I bought another amplifier. God, that's, uh, yeah, no. Shit, send me the amp. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, Sean. Uh, very simple question. I connect the illumination wires on my Kenwood to my car. Oh, geez. Where'd it go? On my car but cannot figure out how to get it to dim figure out how, how to, to get, get the unit, the to, unit dim. to dim so two two things let's talk about this how do i get my i hooked the illumination wire up but it's not doing what it's supposed to first thing you need to hook it up to illumination and not dimmer there's a difference there so dimmer is variable as you do the rocker switch up and down it doesn't want that, it wants your parking light wire. So one that automatically goes to 12 volts when you activate it. So that's something to think about there. There's On a harness, there's an orange wire and an orange with white stripe. You gotta make sure you get the right one. You can easily select that with a digital multimeter. Next, if you plugged in a harness and it had an orange wire, or orange with a white stripe, and you just hooked up to that and it's not working, do yourself a favor, pull the harness back out, Turn the harness to where you can look at the wires that are on the other side and make sure there's a wire on the other side of it. Most of the time, there's not a wire on the other side of it. Now, if you've connected it somewhere else in the car, there again, totally understand. Make sure that it is the light wire, parking light wire, and not a dimmer wire. Next, if all that is hooked up properly, go into the settings of the radio, make sure it's turned on. And then also, you adjust the dimmer, meaning you adjust darkness. When the dimmer is on, you go in and you turn it down and you turn it up. When it, so you can only adjust its brightness when you're in each mode. I don't know, something like that. All right. My head unit setting subwoofer, it's a low pass filter. Then what about the amplifier setting? Should I set it to a low pass filter also? Well, if you want to stack them and make a 24 dB slope, otherwise, um, like we mentioned earlier, turn the, uh, turn the, if you can't turn off the low pass filter on your amplifier, just go ahead and turn it up to its highest level and let the radio do it. It'll be fine that way. That way you can use the crossover that's in the head unit. You'll be good. It'll all work great. How do you hook up a head unit into 1992 Acura Integra? Oh wow, I had 1990. I have an Integra. I think he's still got one. It's been a really? long time. First off, you go to bestkits.com because we're talking 1992, and then we actually it's I'm not even best over kits. It. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for my question. Somebody has cap locks on. <laughs> what do you all use to stop vibration in your license plate? I have Dynamat on my trunk already. Um, stick the thing to the car. Double-sided tape. Yeah. Just get some white double-sided tape. Right on, screw it in. Use four screws instead of two. That's usually a big thing. Most people only have the two top screws, um, but double-sided tape is a wonder. Just stick it on when you need to get it off. You can just... Roll kill the license plate. Yeah, I like double-sided tape. Um, license what plate. DSP do auto EQ like kicker? None. No. None. So a lot of DSPs will do what's called de-equalization. Now the de-equalization feature allows you to go in and flatten out the signal, but it's not gonna go in and do um, time delay, it's not gonna go in and do any of that. Now Pioneer in their head units has the auto EQ feature built into it. That's what you can get the microphone, put it in, and it'll automatically do that for you. But then again, it's a Pioneer, it's typically wrong because it, it always sets it wrong and doesn't really work all that well. Um, 
then Audison had now the, the future we're going to start seeing more and more so Audison has had the bit tune for years now and the idea behind that is it's a full software suite that you can then feed into the amplifier so it has a microphone that goes where your head is and it does it's a very it's like the <laughs> the kicker system times a hundred and then also in the future we're going to start to see was it uh, Moscone or Gladen it's gonna have a mannequin head that has microphones in the ears. That's gonna do. The, you're gonna put the head in the seat. And it's gonna do the same. That's Moscone. Is it Moscone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> but those are also the two most expensive ways of doing it. So, uh, yeah. How did you install 1992 in American International, baby? <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Right, right, right. No, American International is a kit. But that's also Moscone. No, that was one. that was a yeah. big truck, no. Uh, Helix will have their microphones, right? Exactly. Oh, hey, Randy, what's going on, buddy? Yeah. That's so all, Helix right. will have the microphones also. Really? Yeah. So that's Schwartz, Randy Schwartz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, so yeah, they're there's they're gonna have them, but they're not gonna be at that two hundred and forty nine dollar price point that the Kicker Key is at. That's for sure. I hired Barney to like to trip so side around us. Oh, nice. Wow, I didn't know that. That was rough. <laughs> um, for a crew crab truck, do you recommend the sealed or ported box for the L7T? T. Sealed. Sealed. Small sealed. Works great. Sealed, Phenomenal. Sealed, sealed. Yeah. Love sealed it. team? Yeah. Mm hmm. Sealed. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. No, that kicker key is hard to beat, that's for sure. Um, are there any negative trade off, trade off going with a higher sensitivity speaker? All right, hold on. Before you answer that, I want to go back to Tyler real quick. I'm confused. Cruckfield says the Type S subs are RMS 600 watts. Okay, RMS is not normal power. RMS is double normal power. They are a 300 watt woofer that will peak out at 600 watts. It's not a 600 watt woofer that'll peak out higher than that. The high, the RMS is the highest that woofer is ever going to play. That's not a daily thing. Meaning that's not every minute of every second is it designed to play. 600 watts. It's peak power, also confused with RMS. If you look at an R-type woofer, it has a peak power RMS of 1,000 watts, which means it's a 500 watt woofer. All right, so you have a 1,200 watt amp, which is essentially a 1,400 watt amp, giving them double the amount of power. It's it's they're not made for that. Okay, it's just not made for that. I mean, the difference between Crutchfield and somebody that that actually works and does this is that you're talking to some guy on a phone and you're talking to something in a book. We do this for a living. We play with those woofers. We know how they work. That's that. It's not a, it, it's understandably confusing. It's totally understandably confusing because you should be able to look at a woofer that says it handles this much power, go over and buy an amp that's that big. But you looked at RMS, which is the maximum amount of power that woofer can take, and you bought an amplifier that's the maximum amount of power. So the, the experience is not gonna be happy. They're not gonna put out what you're looking for. You need a much bigger woofer. All right, are, are there any negative trade-offs no going man. with a higher sensitivity speaker? What's that? Are there any trade-offs going with a higher sensitivity speaker? Yes, sir. They usually have less power handling. So if it's more sensitive, it has less power handling, which, but that's the trade-off though. So if you get a speaker that is more sensitive, so for example, you look at like the Prima system, mm -hmm. all right, or any system like that where you have a super sensitive um, speaker line and you put 70 watts on it and it sounds amazing. It's bright, it's vibrant, it's great. Now if you take something that isn't super sensitive like like Morel and you put 70 watts on it, you're gonna be sitting there going, oh that kind of sucks, it's not as loud. Well, because you need more power. So there's the trade-off is that now one is not better than the other, it just depends on what you're trying to build. So if you're trying to build something like like a Prima system where it's like, I just want, I want to put 70 watts on something, I want it to be loud, I want it to be vibrant. So you can build a system that is very efficient and with small amplifiers that sounds just as good and vibrant as these bigger, more uh, robust systems. There will be a difference, but it's just a different way of doing the same thing. Uh, where is it? Uh, I don't know. Three components. Does the tweeter need to be close to the mid range, or can the tweeter be in an A pillar, the mid range woofer, and the doors? So I'm gonna say you can put them wherever you want, as long as you have a DSP with time alignment. 
All right, so Helix has it now. The uh, microphone. Yes, yes, but it's definitely not in that price range. Really? It's a lot? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, you probably can buy it. You have that money. I don't. I don't want it. Hey, Julio. Uh, 2009 Ford Flex USB port. Not, not working. What could it be? Ooh. Um... One of the things that they don't talk about in the instruction manuals for most of these uh, Ford systems is that if it has sync, the USB port goes to the sync module. So when you replace the radio, it doesn't work. Um, so you have to buy an adapter that unplugs it from the sync module and plugs it into the back of the radio. Those adapters, uh, US, uh, what is it, USB GM1, I think is the one that, that AMP makes or pack, and then mm -hmm. I know pack. iData has one. That would be the first thing to check, is make sure there's an adapter that takes, you have to unplug it from the sync module, put the adapter on and plug it into the back of your radio. If it's if you've already done that and it's not working, then it might be a distance thing, meaning that the cable is way too long, and at that point, you might need to pull that whole system out and put a new cable in there. But uh, that's it. Oh gosh, geez. What? What subwoofer enclosure is best? Sealed or ported? What's the difference? Thanks in advance. Man, that's that's like the, the worst topic ever. Because there again, you talk to 10 people, you're going to get 10 different answers. Um, so think of, uh, this is the way I like to explain the ported, sealed, bandpass, box discussion, okay? Um, if, you, if you take sound, subwoofer sound, as a circle, Okay, so you have a round ball, all right? And this is the amount of power or volume that it puts out. This is the amount of frequency response it has, okay? So if you have this perfect circle, this would be the sealed box, okay? It has a good output and it has a good frequency response. Now, if you want it ported, you have to squeeze that bubble, all right? So you have more output, but you have less frequency response. If you squeeze it even more, that's gonna be your bandpass. We have, I'm sorry, where you have, <laughs> you have a lot more volume, yeah, you have a lot of volume, but now you have even less frequency response. So, you know, seal box being a perfect circle, this, that, ported, boomy, boomy, but less left and right frequency response. <laughs> now you have to tune it to decide where do I want this level of output to be? Bandpass is even narrower frequency response, but you have a lot of volume, so now you have to really pick where do I want that to be, okay? And that's it. So when you're doing a ported box, you're gonna get limited frequency response compared to a sealed box. Is that bad or good? Depends on the type of music you listen to. Depends on where you're gonna be crossing over. Depends on kind of what mid bass you have in the car. Just depends. Uh, everyone's a little different. I, I like big, fat, and boomy, so I'm gonna go ported. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, what it's do you got? A, it's, it's, um, We're all good? Hang on right here. <laughs> That's Ada, who cares? <laughs> you good? Yeah. Can two, two LPI R-Type 10 subs handle a Rockford Prime? 1200. Uh, if the ohm load is one of them. So the ohm load doesn't matter, but yes, can they handle full power from that amplifier? Yes, that's 600 watts a piece, they'll be fine. Excellent way to explain. Uh, oh, the enclosure? enclosure? You can use that anytime you want, Randy. That one's for you, Just use that one in your class. Dumb. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, that's gonna take us to an hour. So as we talked about at the beginning of the show, make sure to head over to Educar Training at Readable. So edgecartrainingreadable.com or just go to Educar Training. It'll take you over to Readable. Uh, I'll try to put a link to it in the show notes here so that you guys, if you come back tomorrow, you'll be able to find a link to it. It's a $20 course. It's on sale right now. It's down. You save 10 bucks. It's an hour of your life. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot. A lot of those mysterious things that you guys are just like, this stuff, it does He's going to connect the dots for a lot of this stuff, and you guys are going to be like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, why do I need that? Oh, this is cool. So it's broken into three little courses you guys are gonna have a blast with it but yes make sure you head over to educar um hopefully by saturday i'll have a cool sign like this and speaking of cool signs if you guys want to get a hundred dollars off your dmrta pro use the coupon code five star at checkout save a hundred dollars 
Make sure you head over to Wirecare. Wirecare is doing the deal right now. Um, every 5% of everything you buy this month is going to go to Feeding um, America. Uh, America. Yeah, mm-hmm. Feeding America. So it's Wirecare. So it's Wirecare.com forward slash WCFA will take you through the page. Um, I used it this weekend so I could get my cool glasses. We bought a bunch of loom. So I used that hashtag. Um, and that, so I'm getting some more glasses because that's what we need. Fernando Camarón, when he's underneath the car, is putting backup cameras. DNF Tool Drawer is a place you can go find all the cool tools that we use. A lot of them, all of them are up there, and they're all links, and it's all sexy. Patreon, if you want to support the show. Teespring slash store slash five star, if you want to get five star shirts. Um, clean Wire Club, 12 Volt Clean Wire Club on Facebook is a place to post all your clean wire. And pictures, there were, I mean, and questions. There were some good questions up there. Yeah. Um, so I really like that. Questions are cool. Uh, you know, you get good answers. A lot of good guys on there. And I thank all you guys for playing nice. You have to play nice or you get booted. Um, and then, of course, the YouTube, the new YouTube channel, which is Dean and Fernando's Car Stereo Clips. Uh, stay tuned. If you're waiting for more and you've watched all 100 clips that are up there, there'll be some more stuff tomorrow for you guys to watch. We're gonna do something a little bit more fun with it, I think. So we're gonna we're gonna continue. Don't worry, we have stuff planned. That's that's gonna be a fun channel as things go forward. We're gonna be doing a lot with it. Yeah. I'm excited. But hey, listen, you guys, it's been an hour. It's been fun. It's been real. It's been a Monday, right? Hey. Uh, we hope you guys have a great week. Make sure to check us out on Instagram at Five Minutes to Five Star, and of course the random. Five Star After Dark, where Haley and I answer your questions, and she just kind of sits there and laughs at me. It's pretty cool. You guys have a great night as always. Bye. Bye.